This is TOS Television, your digital first Pan-African news network. I am Ruel Panao. In the national news today, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has shown concern about the activities of some whistleblowers who, is, who mislead, pardon me, the agency through false information. Executive Chairman of the Commission, Abdul Rashid Bawa, stated that scarce investigative resources have been wasted by the agencies in following up false leads that frequently come to a dead end. The FCC boss said the activities of false whistleblowers reduced the intendment of the whistleblower policy of the federal government that seeks to encourage information leading to the recovery of stolen wealth. He vowed that the EFCC will not hesitate to prosecute any whistleblower who willfully provides the agency with false information. Meanwhile, the EFCC boss repeated the commission's readiness to work with genuine whistleblowers. Chairman of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, Brigadier General Buba Marwa, says Southwest and South South have the highest cases of drug abuse in the country. He said that there is a link between drug abuse and insurgency, banditry, and kidnapping. The NDLEA boss said crimes will continue to thrive until the issue of drug abuse was addressed. Marwa, who is the former military administrator of Lagos State, made this statement in Ogbomosho, Oya State, on Friday during the inauguration of a rehabilitation center for drug addicts called Behavioral Action Center. The center was built by a group called the Bomosho First Initiative. Marwa said the rates of drug abuse in the Southwest had been found to be 22.4% with the South-South at 16.6% and 13.8% for the Southeast. Now, according to him, the Northeast, Northwest, and North Central came after with 13.6, 12, and 10% respectively. Chairman of Road Transport Employers Association of Nigeria, Mando Chapter in Kaduna, Ibrahim Danborno, has cautioned drivers against night journeys. Danborno gave the advice in an interview with journalists as he said it is to avoid falling victims of kidnappers. He said those security agents are doing their best. Drivers, especially those who operate on a commercial basis, should avoid night trips so as to prevent passengers from danger. Dan Bono said kidnappings happen even at daytime in the country and it has a higher chance to occur at night. Farmers under the support of Association of Small-Scale Agro-Producers have called on Nasarawa state government to involve community stakeholders in its budgeting process for effectiveness in order to guarantee food security. Joshua Jonathan, who is the national president of the association, made the call on Friday at a one-day workshop on inclusive budgeting. He said that including community stakeholders in the budgeting process, especially for the agricultural sector, would increase crop production, guarantee food sufficiency, and security. He said the community development plan approach would enable government to be focused in budgeting and effectively monitor implementation. According to Jonathan, it will also enlighten participants on the role they could play in order for the communities to benefit from the government's budgets. Operatives of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC Lagos Zonal Office have arrested 18 suspected internet fraudsters in Ogun State. They were arrested at Remo Majestic Hotel, Shagamu, Ogun State, during an operation by operatives of the EFCC. Now, items recovered from the suspects include exotic cars, mobile phones, laptop, Wi Fi, and modern devices. As it stands, the suspects will be charged to court as soon as investigations are concluded. You are watching National News on your digital first Pan African news network, TOS Television. To stay with us for more stories after the break. The Nigeria Electricity Management Services Agency, the federal government agency, mandated to certify electricity meters imported into the country, have been directed by President Muhammadu Buhari to ensure the installation of 36 million meters nationwide by June 2021. The Minister of State for Power, Godi Jedi Agba, made this known on Friday after he inspected the meter testing facility of the agency in Enugu. The project is built for commissioning in six to eight weeks' time. Jedi Agwa said that the office was mandated to ensure that meters imported into Nigeria met the country's standard. Former Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onogen, yesterday opened up on the circumstances that surrounded his vacation of seats about two years after. 
Abe, who resigned his appointment on the 5th of April 2019, three months after his suspension by President Muhammad Buhari, said the president acted on a baseless rumor that he held a meeting with former Vice President Atiku Abubakar in Dubai ahead of the last general elections. Since the incidents, this is his first public comment on the issue. He expressed disappointment that despite its huge investigative capacity, the presidency failed to confirm the rumor before removing him. Onogenu spoke at a public presentation pardon me, of a book, said the situation got to his height when all of a sudden his trial before the Code of Conduct Tribunal, CCT, was put in motion even when he had not been invited or accused of any wrongdoing. Frontline investor handling the Lekki Deep Seaport in Lagos Free Zone Tolaram Group has assured Governor of Lagos State, Governor Babadide Shonwolu, that commercial operations will begin in the first quarter of 2023. In a statement signed by the Chief Press Secretary to the Governor, Goyega Kushile, titled Lekki Deep Seaport Begins Operations in 2023, 23, it reads that the first phase of the seaport project is at 48% completion. The port, which is being financed by $629 million facility from China Development Bank, is occupying 90 hectares in the entire 830 hectares of land carved out for the Lagos Free Zone. It was created in 2012 to boost economic position of Lagos as manufacturing and logistics hub in West Africa. The governor of Lagos, State Governor Xiang Liu, on his part, said his administration remained committed to delivering the project. President Mohamed Buhari has congratulated Tanzania's Vice President Samia Suluhu Hassan as she takes over as the country's president after the death of President John Makufuli. The president's congratulatory message to the first ever female president of the country was released by Malam Garba Shehu, the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity in Abuja on Friday. Buhari told President Samia Hassan to unite the nation and lead the country in a good direction. The president expressed his desire to work with the new Tanzanian president to advance mutual issues that were of common African and global interest. Report says nothing less than 13 people have been killed and others injured by bandits during separate attacks in three local government areas of Kaduna State. Now, according to the Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Aruan, the bandits killed one man as he returned from farm with his brother, but his brother was able to escape. In another incident, the armed bandits attacked Kizachi village of Karuru local government area and killed 10 persons, leaving four others injured. 56 houses and 16 motorcycles were also raised, with several bands also raided and burnt. The injuries have been, the injured, pardon me, have been taken to the hospital for treatment. And that's it on the national news. For more updates, visit www.tostvnetwork.com. Do follow and like TOS TV on our social media for platforms. Do stay with us and enjoy more programs on TOS Television News Network. I am Ruo Panao. Many thanks for watching.